Salutations friends and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to talk to you guys about five of my favorite niche houses and tell you guys why I like these houses so much, why I collect these houses, and also show you one of my favorite fragrances in that collection. So if you'd like to know some of my five favorite niche houses then keep watching. Now, the reason why this isn't my top five favorite niche houses is because I'm constantly uh, discovering and trying out new houses and new fragrances. And I don't want to sit here and say this is my definitive five because I'm constantly finding things that I love and discovering new things. And I feel like if I did a top five, it could be in two or three months, that list could be irrelevant because somebody might have knocked one of these out of the list. So rather I wanted to share you guys five fragrances that are very, featured very predominantly on my channel. Um, there's reasons why I love these fragrances. It has to do with the quality, it has to do with originality, and sometimes even presentation helps. And I really love all of these lines, and most of the time I love most of what's in these lines. These lines, they get me really excited and I just get really amped up to wear these or anything from these houses. So let's I'm go. just getting this one out of the way. You knew this was going to be on this list. It's um, Francis Kirk John's private line, Amazing Francis Kirk John. This again, you guys know, Francis Kirk John is one of my favorite noses. I keep mentioning him over and over and over again, like a broken record on my channel. But it's kind of like if you have a favorite musician or if you have a favorite actor, uh, for me, when it comes down to fragrances, Francis Kirk John is just one of my absolute favorites. And I just absolutely love his entire line. Now, this is a more luxurious, expensive line. A lot of niche fragrances, in fact, most niche, niche fragrances are incredibly expensive. So do wear with caution and do sample before you buy. But what I love most about his line is that pretty much all of the fragrances, even his heavier fragrances, minus like, say, Oud Cashmere Mood, work in the environment that I live in, which is the tropics. So his kind of musky floral um, signature that he's known for just wears beautifully in my environment. So not just because it's Francis Kirk John, but just the composition of his fragrances usually work perfectly so I can wear them a lot and I really appreciate them. Now, as you guys know, Aqua Universalis Forte was my wedding scent. So obviously this is my favorite from the line, but I could have easily chosen like Grand Soir or uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 or the x Straight or um, Petite Matin. Uh, those are all, again, fantastic, fantastic fragrances. I think the least favorite in my collection from him is Amiris Pour Home, and I still really love that fragrance. So I generally love everything he comes out with. I don't blindly love it. I just, it just always just works for me. So yeah, that's why uh, this line is one of my top five. Next up, another house that I love, and I mean love, is Le Labo. And the one I chose to choose is my favorite fragrance from Le Labo and one of my absolute favorite fragrances ever. Like just ever, I absolutely adore it. And it's the Chicago City exclusive Bay Rose 26. What I like about Le Labo's fragrances is I think that it's a unique take on fragrances. I like the fact that I think it's kind of interesting when you go to a Le Labo boutique or a little, I don't want to say kiosk, a little pavilion or a little area like in Nordstrom's or things like that. You get to watch them compound, uh, create the fragrance for you in front of you and then you can uh, make it uh, personalized. I really like the entire experience and feel of Le Labo. So part of the reason why I like Le Labo isn't so much just because of its packaging, but because of the experience that you get if you go in store and buy a fragrance from them. I think it's really, really cool. Now I also really like how Le Labo fragrances again work in my environment, even like Poivre 23 or their Oud fragrances, their heavier fragrances, still tend to work really well in my environment and I like how there's something different about them. It kind of catches you off guard because when you read the name, because the name isn't so much like this smells like neroli, this smells like fig, it's a variety of different ingredients that come together with the most predominant one being at the top. Um, you kind of, it's almost like a little bit of surprise if you're unfamiliar with Lava fragrances. I also really like their candles and I really love their, um, their skincare line. I use their balm, I've used their shower gels and their shower oils. I just generally overall enjoy the entire line. So Lalabo is just a line that kind of, 
I really enjoy, I really like the experience of, and I do like the quality of their fragrance. Now some people have some issues with Alabo, some people think that they're overhyped, and some people think that they don't last on the skin too much, and that is one thing I kind of have an issue with with Alabo is the longevity on my skin, but generally I don't mind it because I do love the scents so much. So that is um, why I like Lilabo and Bay Rose 26 is my pick from one of my favorite fragrances ever and obviously my favorite from Lilabo. Next up, and uh, you hear me talk about this house a lot too, and it is House of Matriarch and this is Coco Blanc. Now I know again House of Matriarch is so polarizing and I feel like with natural perfume really perfumery, especially natural perfumery at a premium price. I can understand the, um, the polarization. I can understand people not thinking it's worth it. But the thing is, is like with me is when I'm wearing this, I'm not going to be comparing the longevity and lifespan of this to this. They're different fragrances. They're different um, compositions. There's different ingredients in them. So when I'm looking at natural perfumery, I'm comparing it to other natural perfumery. So although this isn't so much like a niche house that compares equally to everything else, I am going to give this high marks for its originality because I absolutely love its the fragrance profile that this has. And I also just love the way that it smells. I know the fragrance profile, but hear me out. When I'm talking about a fragrance profile, think of Dior fragrances, think of Chanel fragrances, think of Bond Number no. 9 fragrances, Araja fragrances, think of even some like Bath & Body Work fragrances or you know, the body shop fragrances. Think of fragrances are places where you would go and they create their own fragrances, fragrance houses. If you close your eyes and you think with your nose, generally what comes to mind is a specific type of fragrance that can be found in every single one of those scents. Uh, I like to use Chanel as an example because it's a fantastic one to use. When you think of Chanel, you think of Chanel number no. five and the Chanel quality of fragrances. That's why when number 18 you know, people have a hard time grasping number 18 because it is a Chanel fragrance and why people are upset with Gabrielle because it doesn't smell like a Chanel fragrance. Now, what I love about Hesse Matriarch is that kind of DNA, is that soul that is in her fragrances. And some people like the way that smells and some people don't, but I particularly love it. I think she's very talented in kind of weaving and kind of sewing together this beautiful tapestry that is her creations. And I just absolutely love the way they smell. Some of them are a little bit more unique and bizarre, like Forbidden, and some of them are a little bit more easy to understand and more wearable, like Coco Blanc. But all at the same time, I just really love Christie's noise and her point of view when it comes to creating fragrances, which is why I don't mind spending the money on her fragrances, and I do, just to let you guys know, I buy them because there are something there's something that I really resonate with and I appreciate. And I really just love natural perfumery. I am getting into it. I am exploring more houses and more fragrances and more lines. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know. But there's just something about Christie's take on fragrances that I love. And again, Coco Blanc is just a beautifully delicious, yummy fragrance that if you like chai spices and milk tea and tea fragrances, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. So this is why it's one of my favorite niche houses. Now, I think if I were to think about one house that I will blindly buy without even sampling, because I usually sample everything because I have an issue blind buying expensive fragrances, even though I do it, it is a problem. But generally, when it comes down to it, when it blind buying or pre-buying, this house, you will hear me say this all the time, I think he's annoyed at me because I pester him so much, but it has to come to Zoologist. Zoologist, to me, is one of the definitive up-and-coming niche houses. It is just incredible. The noses that he works with, Victor's entire point of view, the creativity and the passion that just go into everything with Zoologist, I love. I also like that his price point is one of the more inexpensive, although it is expensive, more one of the more inexpensive niche houses. You get a lot of bang for your buck. First, you get absolutely impeccable presentation. The boxes and the cards and the bottles and the artwork Everything, and I mean everything that goes into Zoologist fragrances is just incredibly well thought out and just meticulously put together and crafted to create an amazing experience when you're purchasing a bottle of perfume or a travel atomizer or even a sample. 
What I like about it too is even though he is working with a variety of different houses, there is a cohesion with all of his fragrances, which is why I don't mind buying blind. I like Victor's point of view, kind of like Christie's. I love his point of view when it comes to fragrances, and I trust his integrity when it comes with working with other noses to create his vision. So an example, like when Camel came out or when new things come out, I'm usually like, Victor, can I buy a sample early? Alone. I swear, he's probably like, leave me the F alone. <laughs> But I just, I get so excited about zoologist fragrances. Like, there is a hype with me when it comes to something new, when he, like, teases something or shows pictures or shows notes or mentions the notes. I get excited. Victor's line, zoologist, gets me excited for fragrances. And that is one of the reasons why it is one of my top niche brands. Because there's a lot of brands that I love and I have a deep respect for, but it says something when I get excited, like, super excited over fragrances. And so Zoologist is just definitely one of those houses. I'm super excited to see how it's going to move forward. I'm super excited to add more to my collection. And obviously the one I chose with Rhinoceros, I keep going back through Rhinoceros, Civet, Dragonfly, and Camel as my most favorite um, Zoologist fragrance. But Rhinoceros, I can easily get like tongue-tied and like speechless when it comes down to talking to this fragrance because it is so beautiful. If you like boozy, masculine, sexy, rugged scents, oh my gosh, you cannot go wrong with Rhinoceros. It is stunning. And I just love Zoologist to bits. Last and certainly not least is a house that has been around for a very long time. I definitely didn't discover it, but I really love the direction this house is going in. I love all of their fragrances and I've been savagely collecting everything I, that I can possibly get my hands on and it's Pen Halligans. Now I brought out Savoy Steam because this was the first full-size bottle I had purchased from them and I just really love it. It's just a very effervescent, steamy, aromatic rose scent. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance. I love the presentation that Pen Halligans has. It's classic um, bottles, just has this little embellishment right here. And then the portraits collection is just some of the most beautifully, ridiculously gorgeous bottles out there. Now, the thing that I like about Pen Halligans is the fact that I feel like it has something for everybody. And I feel like it has very masculine fragrances, fantastic unisex fragrances, beautiful florals, fantastic ouds. Um, beautiful a uh, variety of formal and like kind of ready to wear like everyday casual scents. I also just really love their presentation specifically the direction they've been going with the portraits collection. I don't know if you guys have been part of the site but about I'd say about six months ago they had this really cool thing where they had the beautiful art that goes with their portraits collection and they kind of had like a murder mystery <laughs> and if you solve the mystery on their website you actually were entered to win the entire portraits collection and I thought that was such a cool way to do a giveaway because it was very interactive but you were interacting with the characters that they had created with their fragrances now some people might think this is kind of gimmicky but I actually think it's quite unique and a really interesting way to introduce people to a new line of fragrances especially a little bit more expensive fragrances than what you normally sell and that's one of the things that I love about Pen Halligans is the fact that they are kind of classic old world scents, but they are kind of taking it and giving it a new, unique twist that's making it a little bit more modern. And I've been seeing that in some of their scents as well. When you smell Hamam Bouquet and some of their older scents, you can definitely see where their roots started. And then as you're smelling some of their newer creations, you're definitely seeing where the brand is going. And I'm really excited for that. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So Pen Halligans is something that it's definitely like within the last year, I've just been super getting into collecting like ravagely like crazy collecting these fragrances because I love them so much and I definitely it has made it to my top niche scents, just houses, absolutely love it. So that's it guys, those are some of my top of five niche houses. I'm going to just quickly recap for you the five and also like let you know why. First we have Francis Kirk John's private line or his signature line, the Maison Francis Kirk John. Absolutely, they work beautifully in my environment and I just really love his point of view when it comes to fragrances. Another house I love points of view when it comes to fragrances is Christy Michelle from House of Matriarch. Whether you're a fan of her work or not, she definitely has a very distinctive point of view that I gravitate towards and really enjoy. And I do love a natural perfumery. I am getting more into it and getting more experience with it. And she was definitely one of the gateways for that, which is why I am just really in love with her line. I also really love Zoologist. I get super duper duper excited for Zoologist fragrances and new releases. There's definitely one of the houses that has gotten me incredibly excited 
for just perfumery and the fragrance community in general. Then we have La Labo. I love the entire experience of La Labo. The fragrances tend to work really well in my environment. And overall, my some of my top favorite fragrances ever in my entire collection come from that house. And then last but not least is Penhaligon's. Again, some amazing fragrances. I love the history behind it, and I really love what the brand is doing moving forward in regards to kind of modernizing old classics while still staying true to their roots. And I love their old stuff, like Kamon Bouquet is absolutely exquisite, one of my favorite fragrances, and I really love seeing how they're twisting it and turning it and creating new fragrances now. And their portrait collection is just stunning. So that's my list, guys, of some of my favorite niche houses. I will probably amend this list and do another a video like this where I talk about five more of my favorite niche houses but I'll probably do that in a few months at least I'll give this video enough time and give myself enough time to really um, experience other houses before I decide if I want to do this list again I will be doing other lists in regards to affordable houses and I'm going to be doing um, luxury houses and designer houses as well so there will be more added to these types of videos so if you'd like to see anything specific let me know in the comment section below I love to know your guys' thoughts on any of these houses, good or bad. Like I said, just because I like something and it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. You are all allowed to have a different thing of opinion. I don't need to tell you that, but you are more than welcome to allow to have conversations about what you like or dislike about any of these houses in the comments section below. I don't kind of police it. I like it to be very organic conversations. But I would love to know your favorites and I would love to know if any of these you don't like. So let me know. As always guys, if you like my videos, remember to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. And I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.